Welcome to this week's Down Home with Tina show. I'm excited because I have got a couple of gentlemen. One is going to be with me to talk about Frontier Spirit 1799. It is an event that takes place every year at Alley Park. And then I'm going to speak with a firefighter slash paramedic slash inspector. He does investigating. Going to find out all about what the, he does and about a new program that they've got that they've been working on and it is going to continue to grow. He goes into detail just to chat about that and I really think it's some great things happening. That is Adam Hederly. <laughs> Folks, don't go anywhere. A good fun show coming up. You are watching Down Home with Tina. <laughs> The Frankie Smith Funeral Home and Crematory in Lancaster and the Johnson Smith Funeral Home in Baltimore have a long and wonderful history of serving our community. Feel free to give us a call at 740-653-0652. Stop in and see us at either of our two locations, 405 North Columbus Street in Lancaster and 207 South Main Street in Baltimore. Respect for tradition, regard for change. Hey, I'm Fairfield County Commissioner Steve Davis. I'm Fairfield County Commissioner Dave Levesey. And I'm Fairfield County Commissioner Jeff Fix. I'd like to invite you to attend our annual State of the County Address, hosted by the Lancaster, Fairfield County, and Pickerington Area Chambers of Commerce at 11.30 a.m. on Tuesday, September 20th at the Wigwam Event Center in Pickerington. There, you'll hear the latest information on county initiatives and what's in store for 2023. Please register online by visiting lancoc.org backslash events. We, we hope, hope to see you there. Welcome back to Down Home with Tina. I have Jeff Taylor with me. This is the first time he is with me as a guest on the show. He is the president of Frontier Players Association, Correct. and it is a nonprofit organization. Yes. And it is an organization that puts on a big event every year. And I'm not, I can't remember, I don't know if you guys did it because it would have been outdoor, outside. We did it last outside, year, but we but didn't do it the COVID, not yeah, 2020. 2020, it was not done in 2020. But it's called Frontier Spirit 1799. And I want to welcome you to the show, Jeff. Oh, it's such a pleasure to be here. I Thank you. You are welcome. And I'm excited to have you because I have seen you in different places. Not only have I attended one of the Frontier Spirit 1799 events but i also had seen you at different places because you play in a band but we're going to talk a little bit about that because you're also going to be doing that during frontier spirit correct so i'm excited yes. so let me start with the history of frontier players Association. yes yes uh, frontier um spirit was really a vision and a dream of uh um uh mark house who is a um uh, Nature Preserve director. Mm -hmm. uh, in 1979, wow. he wanted so much to make our rich local history uh, something you could touch and feel mm -hmm. and be a part because we do have a rich local history. So that's how uh, Frontier Spirit was birthed. He got some uh, uh, folks together to act uh, the various parts of our founders, started small, moved on, and uh, here we are uh, in, uh, in 2022, and thousands of families, literally thousands of families have enjoyed uh, Frontier Spirit the last weekend uh, in September every year. Now, is it, who are those actors that are in this? They are local folks. Everyone's a volunteer. We're a volunteer army. <laughs> and they're local folks. The common denominator is the love of history, and in particular, our local history. Mm -hmm. And so you've got people that are portraying the characters, but then you've got an incredible team of background folks that work to really make that happen. Everything from setting up the village to, to getting the trail ready to the concessions and, and the various things that go along with it. So there's a, a lot of folks that pour themselves into this 
uh, event every year. It takes place out at Alley Park. Yes. Has it from the beginning? No, there were a, a, a couple of other locations, and I'm sorry I don't recall oh, those, yeah. but for the longest time now, it's been at Alley Park. It's yes. the last full weekend in September, September every year. Every year, yes. And this is something that is free. Yes, it is. And now, donations are welcome. Absolutely. <laughs> because you said a volunteer organization. Yes, but it is. It's totally free. Parking's free. It's all free, with the exception of concessions. Before I get to asking you about everything or something, or things that folks would expect when they do come out to Frontier Spirit, why did you get involved and how many years have you been involved with them? Well, um, my family and I went to uh, Frontier Spirit the first time in um, uh, September of 1986. Okay. And so I've gathered my, my, my <laughs> family and we've parked across the way there. We go into the park, we walk up and we look over to the right. And there is this village where there are all this canvas, all these tents, and I'm smelling all these smells of food <laughs> cooking. And I'm seeing these folks in this, this, this period uh, gear and I'm saying, oh, we are at the right place. So we went in there, we enjoyed the village, and so much to talk about there in terms of all the different demonstrations that were going on, candle making, soap making, weaving, flint napping, uh, blacksmithing, all these things were going on. And I'm just, I mean, I'm just in awe the whole time. And then it's time to go out on the trail. So you go out there and you get an introduction of what's going on. Um, in this period of time, and then you come to this place, and it says timeline, mm -hmm. or you're gonna cross this, mm -hmm. and you're gonna be in 1799. Okay, well, I love history, so I love to get into things. I mean, like, just immerse myself. So when I came to that timeline, and I crossed it. I can't tell you what that felt like. Aww. It was just absolutely amazing, and then to go, from scene to scene to scene, and each scene will portray something about uh, this time in history, in 17, uh, late 1700s, the um, bigger than life personalities that were a part of that time. They're being um, portrayed, different events. You've got things that are just hilarious to where you're laughing like crazy, and then also you're sort of, uh, at times there's some tense scenes and then there's music. I was just, I, I was captured. And then that very year, I knew Mark House, who was the founder, and uh, we went to the same church. And he asked me if I would be able to play a part that, that Sunday, because the one person that was going to be there couldn't make it. Oh. So I was able to be Hezekiah Smith which was uh, one of the owners of the first grist mill, Rock Mill. So from then on, it's a, it was game over. I was involved every year after that, had my family involved, Very and nice. we have just enjoyed it so much, Tina. All of those, I don't want to call them characters, but folks who portray, are they specific people from in history? or are any of them fictional characters? Uh, no, they're all actual characters. And that's one of the thing, and again, these are all volunteers, but these folks study their characters and learn. About them. Yes, so wow. they, can, they can portray them, not only factually, but, but just kind of, you know, and the, the emotionally, feeling what they may have felt. Because yeah. these, you know, we take so much for granted every detail for food and clothing, um, shelter, that's all you did. You worked so hard to have that. And so they portray the challenges and difficulties, but also the rewards. Is there an, is it an appropriate age for the children that would come out to this? Oh, any age. Any age oh, yeah. yes. Any Should you age. prepare them for anything at all? Because I know um, sometimes you have the... Just, gener generally, the they're or... all fine. Um, you know, sometimes there'll be a gunshot on the trail mm -hmm. uh, and things like that. But uh, so parents might mention that to them. Um, uh, but they all do well. Um, we 
we don't have any really right. crying yeah. on the trail, yeah. except for if you just get emotional about a scene. It, it, yeah, <laughs> you're sensitive folks hearing, yeah. and kids, yeah. some kids don't like that. Yeah. But the train and the walking of the trail is like you're walking through the woods. So you what are. do you recommend folks who are coming out to they be They need to have for? casual wear, and they need to be mindful uh, that there are some uh, inclines. And mm -hmm. we have uh, two guides uh, in each time a group goes out. And one of the things that the guides do is make sure there's adequate time to stop, mm -hmm. take a break, get a breather. Uh, so they do, folks who come do need to understand that it's really very difficult for um, strollers. Yeah. They're really not going to work out there. Right. And um, then also if folks are needful of a wheelchair, uh, that's not going to work. But what does work is what takes place in the village. Because folks who um, yes. are, are maybe confined to a wheelchair, they can get a full and awesome and wonderful experience in the village. But it is some rigorous, it's a climb, it's a good exercise, yeah, but so you have to be ready for that. How often does a group go out for folks who want to come out? Does it vary or is it kind of like right on a set time, like a half the ha It's a, half usually the about hour. a half an hour, okay. roughly in there, okay. that that groups go out on, okay. on the... Uh, so let's say like 1 o'clock and then 1.30, 2 o'clock. So if somebody's going to yeah. show up, you come at 1.35, you're going to be waiting for 20 minutes or You so. could, yes. But waiting is awesome because there's all kinds of things to do while you're waiting. You're right. Because yes, in the village, right. you've got children's games, you've got uh, a hunting of arrowheads, and you've got walking on stilts, you've got paddle boards, all kinds of things for children to do, for all, every age to do. Jeff, in the village, are there items that can be purchased and is there food that can be purchased Yes, to eat? there are items that can be purchased. Uh, there are several of the... Um, uh, uh, Presenters, demonstrators have things available yeah. then for them to have. And um, there is uh, uh, the thing that some people come for just by themselves, the beans, bean soup. Oh, yes. So the bean <laughs> soup is cooked out on these big kettles. Open and, fire. Oh, oh open fire. Oh, like yeah. <laughs> and so, yes, you can buy that and other things at the concession. We didn't even get to talk about some of the entertainment because we've only got a couple of minutes left. Yes. So let's talk, if we can, real quickly about the entertainment and folks who would like to volunteer and become involved. Yes. Yes. Um, volunteers are so much welcome. Our website, uh, frontierspirit.org, has a place where you can sign up to volunteer. Okay. We'll get in contact with you, see what you want to do. Okay. So that's absolutely uh, available for folks if they want to do that. And I'm sorry, what was the second part of your question? Oh, you know what? The getting involved and I can't even remember what I had said, but this is it. The dates and the times. That's important. Yes. I know we're running so, out of time. So, okay. Who so cares what it, that question was? Like, again, it's the 24th and the 25th <laughs> of September and the gates uh, open at 10, close at 5. Okay. And on Sunday, gotta, I've got to say this, there's a church service, yes. a period okay, church perfect. service on Sunday at 9 o'clock <laughs> and a circuit rider preacher. Perfect. I think we got it all fixed. See, there's so much good stuff there, we can't even get it in. <laughs> Give me questions, go to their website. We'll just yes, do that in yes, text and yes. message you. All right. Thank you so much, oh, Jeff. Oh, thank it's you. It's been a pleasure. It has. But folks, don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. It's Down Home with Tina. You walked down the aisle and promised happily ever after. Sometimes happily ever after means ending a relationship. We know the conversations are not easy. Deciding what's best for you, your children, and your next steps takes work and communication. At Dagger Law, we know there are no monsters in a divorce, only people trying to find their way. Local, trusted, experienced. Dagger Law. Welcome back, folks. It is the Downhill with Tina show, and as you can see, I have got a fireman's, firefighter's helmet oh, on, right. and I've got Adam Hederly with me, and he is an inspector, but he does a lot of different things. He is a firefighter, paramedic, for the division of the City of Lancaster Fire Department. 
Adam, how are you? First of all, Good. this is really heavy. Like, how many pounds is this thing? Because it almost can give me a headache, and it's I, not even been on my head for three minutes. I don't know. A um, couple pounds, it's like I'm guessing. Kinda, oh, wow. Yeah. It just comes yeah. right off. <laughs> uh, the longer you wear it, the heavier it gets. So, yeah. Like, the pressure on it. But, no, very interesting. This is not why we are talking today about, you know, the helmets or anything like that. I just thought it would be fun to have one on to start out the segment with. So, thank you for bringing it. Sure. So, I, we've got a lot to talk about and share with folks today. You guys have some really cool things. And I know that before we got started, you had mentioned a little bit about something, another, I will call it a program mm -hmm. today for the show, that you had started off about the time COVID happen and then it kind of a lot of things happen when yeah. COVID happened because you had to kind of you know redirect a whole lot of different ways of how you're going to do things at that time but it is a program that we're going to discuss today but before we get to that I wanted to ask you why did you decide to become a firefighter <laughs> um, honestly I don't know I don't have a history of it in the family. It wasn't something that I, like, you know, growing up said, hey, I want to be a firefighter or a police officer or whatever. Um, I had no idea what I wanted to do when I was graduating high school. Um, so my first year in college was spent just getting the basics done. And I decided that I was going to be a physician's assistant, oh. PA. Um, at the time, I believe there were only two public schools and two public colleges in the state of Ohio that offered a program. So they were pretty selective. So that summer after my first year at Ohio State, um, talking to some doctors and other family friends was, hey, uh, get into an EMT program, get that background, uh, that'll help you when you go to this process to become a PA. So okay. I went into an EMT program and instantly thought, wow, this could be really fun, I like this, and then s stayed there through the medic, through the fire server, through the fire program as well, and then here I am. So. <laughs> How many years ago was that? Uh, 25, oh. 26 almost, 26 okay. years ago. Okay. Yeah, have you had a highlight of your career so far? They're all highlights. Too Aww, <laughs> that's cool. So, <laughs> so you, you really like what you do, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I wanted to, now we'll go ahead and talk about what is it that you do today? Because are you out in the medic? No. Um, so I currently work in our arson and, uh, I'm sorry, our prevention and investigation bureau. Okay. Um, it's out of station three on East Main. Um, we run four inspectors out of there. All the inspectors are uh, the prevention officers who do your annual building inspections. Uh, okay. throughout the city. Every commercial building or public business in the city gets inspected on an annual basis. We're the ones that do that. Um, but we are also uh, our fire investigators. Okay. So any fires that happen in the city are required to get investigated and that's where we come in. We'll come and do our investigations and, and determine a cause uh, mm -hmm. and the origin. So um, what started the fire and where did it start type stuff. Um, but then I also operate as the uh, the youth fire setter mm -hmm. intervention specialist, so I can get kids referred to me that might uh, have gotten in trouble from setting stuff on fire, or we have a family concern from a parent that they noticed somebody was playing yeah. with fire, uh, and they'll come, um, they get to talk with me on a couple different visits, and I make an assessment based on that assessment, I determine their need. Mm -hmm. uh, and if it's something that I can manage with education, that's what we do. Um, but if in their assessment they need something more than me, I will refer them to counseling. Uh, okay. And if it's really bad, then they get immediately sent to like a hospital for okay. care, so. Is there anything that you can share with parents or guardians on what to look for, if, you know, to just be aware of their child that might start to show interest in well, I mean, setting fires or playing with fire they're going to see different? I mean yeah <laughs> yeah there's there's always that curiosity stage in mm -hmm. kids um, but it only lasts really for so long uh, the older kids that curiosity is gone so if, if you're noticing things that are burned around the house uh, outside the house especially leaves um, things inside the house might be if you have if you're a smoker 
um, and you have matches or lighters laying around, mm. you might see paper burnt um, into the ashtrays or into the trash can. Um, that might be an indication that a child in the house is um, okay. playing with fire and not in a safe way usually. Um, and if it's a concern for the parent, then yeah, reach out to us and we'll see what we can do. Is there anything that they can just like do in advance just to keep that? Or is it sometimes the, just the kids are curious? If it's a curiosity thing, they can, I mean, if, if they're not comfortable having the conversation with their child okay. about how dangerous fire can be, then, then reach out to the fire department and, and we'll, we will be able to do that. Okay. Um, but the big thing is to make sure that the devices that can start fires, matches, lighters, anything. I figured, yeah. Just keep them out of reach. Keep them hidden. Don't let the children know where they are, but they're yeah. probably going to find them anyway. <laughs> but uh, right. really just paying attention. If you're seeing signs that maybe they're lighting stuff on fire yeah. in or around the home, then talk with them. So. Okay. Yeah. So I want to talk about this newer program. Okay. It is a, what's it called? I'll let you say. <laughs> Overall, it's community risk reduction. Yeah. Um, so because of the work in the Bureau doing the fire prevention investigation, mm -hmm. um, it kind of brings that in along with um, a new position, which is the community paramedic. Okay. Uh, so in total, it's the community risk reduction role or program. Um, and it will allow me to continue to do the work that I'm doing in the Bureau, but then do more medical stuff on the outside that would benefit um, the fire department and the, the community itself. So, Do you see a lot of repeat folks calling 911 yes. and having yeah. you come out on yeah. calls? Yeah. yeah. Um, we, we have people that call a lot. Um, I would say upwards of 30 times a month. Uh, we talked about that earlier. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the, the definition of a frequent caller is more than three times in a 90-day span. So wow. um, there's a big difference there. And a goal for the community paramedic might be to reduce that 911 calling. And in order to do that, it would require an assessment of the patient. Um, and determine a need, you know, are they doing this to fill a void? Um, mm -hmm. if, if they are, then what can we do to help them fill that void without calling 911? Because a lot right. of times it's not an emergency. Mm -hmm. um, they don't need an emergency service. Uh, they may just need someone to talk to, or they may just need a ride to the hospital for uh, right. a doctor visit, um, which is okay. Yes. But yeah. You have to keep in mind that you are taking an emergency vehicle out of service to do that. So yeah, when it's uh, an emergency to them, maybe, but if it's something right, that can be prevented, right. because there are other bigger emergencies yeah. that could arise at yeah. those times, exactly. and you have three medic trucks. With three, well, four. Right, four, oh, four now. Well, four, well three, three full time. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. Four, uh, depending There's, on the day. Okay, um, yeah. So with the levy that passed uh, like a year, yes. year and a half ago, um, the idea behind that levy was to get that truck in service full time. What it did, yes. would, what it will do is put the, the tower in service full time. With a Medic 4 is a cross-staffed vehicle and they will take runs based on what happens in the city. So yeah. um, it just currently depends on the day. Um, today, I believe it is in service, um, but tomorrow it may not be. We're still trying to get our numbers up, <laughs> As in our, our staffing, in yes. <laughs> uh, our staffing numbers up to where this will be sustainable full time. Uh, yeah. We just don't have the numbers to do it right now. Right. Uh, every for every one we put on, two guys retire. That seems to be uh, the case right now, but I think that's yeah. the case across the board everywhere. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, so they're looking, folks. Yeah, <laughs> no, somebody <sorry>. interested. <laughs> Reach We're out. looking, uh, and honestly, we we've, we've kind of we've dropped back on our um, our demand for what was required for somebody to sit and take the test. Mm -hmm. um, to take our test, it used to be you had to be a full time firefighter. You had to have your your paramedic certification mm -hmm. um, to even sit for the test. Now. That's not the case anymore. Okay. You have your fire card and you can come on as an EMT basic. You get hired, you'd just be asked to obtain that paramedic certification in a certain time frame. So. Nice, very nice. Okay, I know, Did what have we missed? Because I know we're about out of time. <laughs> really, <laughs> already? I know, right? It goes so fast. <laughs> uh, more on the community paramedic part yes. of it. So yeah. when this goes up and running full time, 
um, it will be a referral based program that um, we don't know exactly how we're going to take referrals yet. We get to build this program from the base all the way to how it's going to benefit the community and benefit mm -hmm. the fire department. Um, but referrals could come from family members, come from other medical agencies, hospitals, clinics, things like that, uh, or from the guys on um, the medics that are out on the front lines that see something that a patient could benefit mm -hmm. from, and I would be the bridge to get them there. Yes. Um, but we also uh, work with the fort, so mm -hmm. the yes. community paramedic also would be the lead in the fort program, um, which I currently do anyway. Uh, so that's just kind of going out and visiting um, with people that may have experienced an overdose yeah. and yeah. are asking for help. So. Yes, yes. So folks be paying attention because it's just beginning. Yeah. It's going to continue yeah. to grow and get even bigger and better. Hopefully. And it's just yeah. to help folks who are continuously going and calling you guys for the same thing over and over. It's just getting them to where it could be something that yeah. keeps them from calling. May not always be, may yeah. not always be the frequent callers. Yes. Um, it may be oh, yeah. somebody who has an immediate need but can't make it to uh, either a primary care physician um, or an urgent care uh, that could benefit from a visit from me and I could treat you at the house and, and leave you there and it prevents you from calling 911, mm -hmm. prevents you from going to the hospital when you may not need to be there. To the hospital. Perfect. Awesome. And you are my first responder of the month, so <laughs> okay. I have to give you your goodies before we get out of here. There is a um, little gift in here from Ava Jewelers and some other goodies. and Because you guys, at, I don't know how often you are there at the firehouse, but I don't know if you've ever heard of Bean Boozled, but it would be really fun to play some tricks on some of the other guys or gals okay. there. Because they, have you ever heard of them? No, I have not. Nasty tasting yeah. jelly beans that just do it and watch the look on them. <laughs> no, I don't, don't blame me. I'm like, I am on camera talking about this. I should blame Tina's Tina. Fault. <laughs> Tina's fault, fault when yeah. somebody gets something that doesn't taste. Those who know what Bean Boozled um, jelly beans are, it's just a fun thing that I thought I'd throw in there. But, First Responder Month is brought to us by Bay Food Market. So I want to thank you for what you do, Adam. Sure. Thank you. And continue and good luck with all that we've got going on with the community risk reduction program yes. and stuff. Folks, don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. It's down here with Tina. Okay, Dad. One, two, three. Ah! Finder. Your hero needs you now, and AARP is here to help. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. Downhill with Tina is brought to you by these wonderful sponsors. You can watch Downhill with Tina on Spectrum 1021, on YouTube, CLN, your hometown connection, also my Facebook page, and you can share the Facebook and the YouTube as much as you would like. We've always got great things going on in the community. If you are a nonprofit, I love to have my nonprofits on, or if you know of a firefighter or, or, or police officer, first responder, or a teacher, a student, or a veteran that you would like to, for me to highlight here on the show, hey, let me know. You can send me an email at downhillwithtina at gmail.com. Folks, also, if you are interested in helping out with my Operation Teddy Care Project, you can contact me through that same email or you can go ahead and go on to LancasterCPAAA.com and donate there. It's just helping with getting teddy bears out to the law enforcement and we've got other things that we've got ideas for for kids that are going through trauma or some kind of domestic violence situation just to help them to give them a little TLC. Folks, I hope that you have a wonderful week. Thank you so much for watching. God bless and good day.